Chapter 5 The minute Jared, Kyle, Tyler, and Blake stepped into Manny's basement, it's clear Jared's equality brigade thing was a terrible idea. In the month and a half since the racial equality discussion in social evil, Jared's been on a crusade to prove things in America are equal. Last week, he told Manny and his crew about this brilliant idea he had. Bros, he said, let's all dress as different stereotypes for Halloween and then go out together. It'll be this massive political statement about racial equality and broken barriers. Dude, even asked Justice to participate. Just, of course, wasn't real king at first, but he let Manny talk him into it. He's regretting that now. Five of the six costumes are mostly fine. Just as the thug, naturally. Pants belted around his thighs with boxers exposed. Thug life t-shirt. Thick gold chain with a huge medallion. Fitted, flat build baseball cap. He and Manny even made a grill out of gum wrapper for just to wear on his bottom teeth. Manny's the token black guy. Khakis, loafers, and polo with a cable knit sweater draped over his shoulders and tied loosely at the chest. He's really into it, too. As soon as he was dressed, he started calling just, Old chap! And my good man. Jer's the yuppie. Politician. He's wearing a suit. Even has a spot on his chin where he nicked himself shaving and left a little piece of tissue there for effect. Tyler's the surfer dude, board shorts and a tank top, even though it's only 50 degrees out. Kyle went with the redneck, woodland, camouflage shirt, overalls, trucker hat with a Confederate flag, patch, dinky cowboy boots. He even had his sister attach a few of her hair extensions, so he has a mullet. Frankly, this one is toe in the line, but okay, not quite crossing it. Blake. Though. Blake takes it too far. He's dressed as a clansman. He's got on white robe. He's got on the white robe with the circular red and white cross patch on the chest, and he even has the pointed hood with the eye holes cut out. If just didn't know it was a costume, he'd be a little scared. Juh. Can I talk to you for a sec, dog? Manny says to Jared. Who, to Justice's surprise, also seems pretty uncomfortable with Blake's choice of attire. Sure, man. They walk to Manny's room and Justice is left standing with the others. Justice, that costume is sick, homie, Blake says. Because of Klansmen's would definitely call a black guy homie. Just fights the urge to shake his head. Yours is a... Uh... Wait till I put the hood on, bro. This right here is the genuine article. He spreads his arm, beaming like he's wrapped in a garment formerly worn by Jesus. Justice is tempted to ask where the genuine article came from, but he's not sure he wants to know the answer. Just then, Jared appears. Hey, Justice, Manny wants to talk to you, bro. Justice nods and takes the deepest breath he's ever taken. Then strides to Manny's room with the eight white boy eyes burning into him like lasers. Yeah, this blows. Sup, dog? Just says once he steps in and closes Manny's door. Though, of course, he already knows what it's about. So Blake's costume is, well, you saw it. Just snorts, I did. If you, um, Manny scratches his neck. Don't want to go anymore. It's cool, Manny. Manny's thick eyebrows jump to the sky. It is, yeah, man. Truth is, four hours ago, just was ready, just was ready to back out because the idea of going anywhere with Jared and crew just felt wrong, knowing what he knows about how they think. But then he stumbled upon Martin's definition of integration, intergroup, and interpersonal living, and decided to just go with it. He's not sure this is exactly what Martin meant, but what is he supposed to say? You ready to go, dog? 
Oh, Manny clears his throat. <clears throat> I guess so. Let's roll then. Just leaves the room. It's just a costume, right? Brotherhood for the win. As soon as Just and Manny get back to the others, Jared takes a bunch of the group pictures and posts them online. Then he says, equality, brigade, let's ride, and leads the charge to the door. When they get to Manny's car and Blake pulls on the hood and raises his arm in the Nazi salute, Justice knows the train he just hopped on and is headed downhill in a major way. It occurs to him that the moment he said he was cool with the whole thing, he cut the brake lines and completely surrendered his power to stop it. And he's right. Not five minutes after they get to the party, somebody sucker punches Blake in the face. The burst of bright red beneath the eye holes in his pointed hood makes Justice sick to his stomach. The next thing he knows, there's a group of genuinely thugged out black dudes and one white guy standing in front of Equality Brigade, looking like, the, looking like they want to break all of their stereotype faces. The worst part, Justice knows every single one of them. They live in his mom's neighborhood. This is Manny's cousin's crew. Justice pretty sure they all belong to a gang called the Black Jaheed, run by a crazy older dude named Martel Montgomery. A dark-skinned guy with, a sh with short dreadlocks gives Just a once-over and smiles. That's a real funny costume, Justice. Oh, uh, thanks, Trey. Definitely not just his most valiant moment. And you, Trey says to Manny, you Quan cousin, right? Yeah, Manny says, scratching the back of his neck. What y'all doing here with those clowns, bruh? Just gonna let your boy disrespect our people like that? Trey points to Blake who has removed his pointed hood and is holding it in his nose and who is holding it to his nose to snatch the blood. Jared, dude, we didn't mean you any disrespect. Manny, chill, Jared. Trey, yeah, Jared, you should really shut your mouth right now. Your boy has made me and my dudes upset coming in here dressed like that. Justice, Trey, he didn't mean anything by it, dog. We were doing this satire thing with stereotypes, and it went too far. Lesson learned. Trey smiles at Justice then. Well, more like sneers. It makes just like cockroaches are walking all over him. You ain't changed a bit, Justice. Still Mr. Smarty Pants, Trey says, and then one of the other pipes up. Y'all know he goes to that rich white school in Oak Ridge now. It's called Brasselton Prep, Jared corrects. Justice really wants Jared to shut up. Oh, the white dude, Brad, just believes, raises his hands in mock adoration. Trey looks back and forth between Jess and Manny. Don't get it twisted, my dogs. These white boys might be standing here next to y'all, but y'all still ain't nothing to them. You heard me, he says. Ain't no amount of money nor intelligence can change that. Jared, hey, man, that's not true. You don't even shut up, Jared. This from Surfer Tyler. Let's just leave, bro. Trey, sounds like a great idea to me. Jared, bro, this isn't even your party. You can't tell us to leave. Trey laughs, and one of the other guys lifts his shirt to reveal the handgun grip sticking out of his waistband. I most certainly can, white boy. Trey says, now you and your little crew get your punk butts out of here before things escalate. The guy with the gun smiles at Just. You and Rich Boy can stay with us if you want to. All the Black Chahi guys laughed. Trey, bruh, you know these guys don't want to chill with us. They going places. <clears throat> Got to stay connected to the white man for the ride to the top. He nudges the white guy with them, and they both snicker. Let's go, y'all, Just says. As they turn to leave, Justice can feel Manny trying to catch his attention. But he stares straight ahead. 
They step outside and the chilly night air hits their faces. Just here is Jared, asks Manny. You all right, bro? Yeah, man, I'm cool, Manny replies. Jared steps ahead to walk to the others and just watches Manny examine his tied sweater his khakis, his loafers, his costume made up of clothes he pulled from his closet. He unties the sweater, then looks up at Justice. For the moment, they understand each other. Justice takes the fitted cap from his head and fake and the fake chain from his neck. Happy Halloween, Trey calls out behind them.